Hello, I'm Samantha and I'm a stage 4 breast cancer survivor. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so I've been making a video every Tuesday in October to help spread awareness of breast cancer. In this video I wanted to talk about different kinds of cancer related terms that people use to describe breast cancer and some other types of cancer as well. The first thing I want to talk about is the difference between stage and grade. They are not the same thing. So if you hear someone say, I had stage 2 cancer, that's not the same thing as having grade 2 cancer. Stage usually refers to how big the cancer is and where it has spread to. So for breast cancer, this ranges from stage 0, which is breast cancer that isn't considered um, invasive yet. Yeah, it's sometimes called pre-cancer because the cancer is still where it started and it hasn't spread at all. Stage 1, 2, and 3 have to do with the size of the tumor and um, if it has spread to the lymph nodes around the breast or not. And stage 4 breast cancer means that it has spread somewhere outside the breast and surrounding lymph nodes and has gone somewhere else in the body. The grade of the cancer really has to do more with how the cells are behaving. So some cancer cells can look more like regular cells and some can look more completely abnormal. So a higher grade, the cells tend to look more abnormal and a lower grade, they tend to look more like normal cells. And with a higher grade, the cancer is usually spreading more aggressively than with a lower grade that is not spreading as rapidly. When I was first diagnosed with cancer, I had a biopsy and the grade of the cancer was found from that biopsy. So I had some cancer that was grade two and some that was grade three, but I did not know the stage of my cancer yet because I had not known where the cancer had spread to. We weren't exactly sure of the size yet. You can't figure out all of those things until sometimes after surgery to have um, the lump removed or from doing different types of scans to see where the cancer is in the body. So sometimes it really makes people mad when they just find out that they have breast cancer and someone's like, oh, what stage is it? Because a lot of times they could have absolutely no idea, especially if it's not stage four where it's obviously spread somewhere else. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but there are different types of breast cancer. It's not all the same for every person. They can start at different places in the breast and it can behave in different ways in the breast. I'm not gonna go through every type of breast cancer because some are very rare and I do not know much about them. Um, but the type of breast cancer that I had was invasive ductal carcinoma. This refers to where the cancer started. So invasive ductal carcinoma started in my milk ducts and then um, spread outside of that. Invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common type of invasive breast cancer. ILC starts in the glands that make the milk in the breast. And both of these types of cancer, I mean, can be invasive. They can spread out of these areas and into other parts of the body. Another thing that you will hear a lot is DCIS, which is ductal carcinoma in C2. That is cancer or precancer, stage zero breast cancer, that is still um, contained in the milk ducts and has not become invasive, it has not spread outside. Even though this is sometimes referred to as precancer or stage zero cancer, it is still important to have these cells removed because they can obviously form into invasive cancer later on. Another type of breast cancer that's a little more rare is inflammatory breast cancer. This tends to happen a lot more in younger women, like under the age of 40. It might be harder to detect this type of cancer because it frequently doesn't form a breast lump at all. Sometimes it doesn't show up on scans and it tends to spread way more aggressively and has a worse outcome. So another thing is you might have heard me say before that my cancer is ER and PR positive and HER2 negative. Those things have to do with what the cancer uses to grow. ER positive means estrogen receptor positive and that means that the cancer uses the hormone estrogen to grow. PR is progesterone receptor positive so that means that the cancer uses progesterone. HER2 is just another type of protein that the cancer can use to grow. My cancer was HER2 negative. It's important to know this about your cancer because it can affect the type of treatment that you do. So I did hormone therapy for a while, which limited my estrogen and progesterone. Um, just kind of told my body to stop making those things as much. And that was just because my cancer used that to grow, so we try to take that out of my body. If you have hormone receptor negative cancer, those treatments aren't really going to help you as much. If you have HER2 positive cancer, there are other things that you can do, some other types of oral chemo that can help. You will hear the term triple negative breast cancer a lot, and that is basically breast cancer that is 
PR, ER, and HER2 negative. And so that cancer can be seen as harder to treat because you can't do those other little things to help your body stop producing those hormones and proteins because it's not using those, it's not using that to grow, it's still growing without them. And then the other side of that is obviously triple positive breast cancer. Um, your breast cancer can be PR, ER, and HER2 positive, and so your doctor might recommend all of those treatments for you in that case. You might hear the term METS or MBC or metastatic breast cancer. Um, that's basically just stage four breast cancer. It means that the cancer has metastasized to another point in the body and has spread somewhere else. You can use the term metastasized to say that it has metastasized to the lymph nodes. Um, so that kind of gets a little bit confusing sometimes because if it has just spread to the lymph nodes, that's not stage four. But basically that's what metastatic means. It means that the cancer has spread somewhere else. One term that is not used very frequently that I think should be used more is oligometastatic. I'm very bad at saying that word. But basically that means that it has spread to another part in the body, but it has only spread to like one or two other distant sites. It might be a lot easier to cure the cancer at that point than if it was fully metastatic and spread to a lot of different organs or spread to a lot of different places. You will hear a lot of times that metastatic breast cancer is incurable, but when it's just oligometastatic, it sometimes can be curable, um, but really, those terms aren't really separated a lot of times, so people who are oligometastatic, which is more like what my type of cancer is, get grouped in with the regular metastatic um, group of people because it's all stage four, but it's not really, it's not really exactly the same thing. Another thing that you might hear sometimes is stage four de novo. That just means that you were diagnosed with stage four breast cancer right when you found your cancer. That was me in my case. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was already stage four at the time of my diagnosis, but anyone who has early stage breast cancer who ends up getting stage four cancer later on in life, they wouldn't be stage four de novo because they originally found their cancer at an earlier stage. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through a few of the types of tests that breast cancer patients get. So most women over 40 get regular mammograms to help screen for breast cancer. This is just a test where it will squeeze your breast down and it'll scan your breast and then someone will read it and try to determine if they can see a lump or signs of cancer in your breast. A lot of times if you have dense breast tissue or if they see an issue on that mammogram, they will send you in for an ultrasound because it's a lot easier to see um, things on ultrasound for women that have denser breasts or sometimes just in general it's just easier to see certain things on an ultrasound. An ultrasound test is the one where they like have like the goo and they have the little probe that goes around on your breast or like you know on your stomach if you're pregnant because that's what most people associate ultrasounds with. Since I was 22 when I was diagnosed they didn't even try to do a mammogram on me they just sent me straight for an ultrasound and I still haven't gotten a mammogram yet. I'm 26 now and I get yearly ultrasounds instead. Another test that I get yearly is an MRI. That's the one where you, you know, go inside the machine and the machine makes all this noise around you. You can get MRIs for lots of different things. Again, just another type of test. You can see different types of things um, to try to figure out if there's cancer. A PET scan is a scan that I tend to get every six months now. That is a test where they inject you with some radioactive dye and then that dye goes to places in your body with high activity. So the cancer will light up bright on that scan from that dye. There are other things that in your body that'll light up brightly from that, like your brain, because your brain's doing a lot of thinking all the time. They know what's supposed to light up and they know what's not supposed to light up, so they're looking to see what parts light up. And the parts that light up are the active cancer. And you probably have heard cancer patients say that they have gotten a biopsy before. A biopsy is a way to take out some of the tissue that they think the cancer is in, so obviously for breast cancer that would be in your breast, and they then take that tissue to a lab and look at it under a microscope, do whatever they need to do to study it and figure out whether or not it's cancer. There's multiple different types of biopsies and you have to do that procedure in different kinds of ways, um, in different situations and depending on where your cancer is. Um, but a typical breast biopsy is just kind of, the way it was kind of described to me is it kind of makes the sound of a ear piercing gun. It goes into your breast, it goes and it just pulls out 
some of the tissue. Um, mine was an ultrasound guided biopsy, so my breast surgeon took like the ultrasound probe, she found where the cancer was shown, and then she stuck that needle inside and you could see like the needle going through like on the ultrasound machine. There's lots of different types of scans and tests that you can get, but if I went into all of them, this video would be super, super long. So maybe I'll make another video another day talking more about the types of tests. Okay, so another thing that I want to talk about is genetics. So you may have heard of the BRCA genes. So that's BRCA1 and BRCA2. And the reason that you might have heard of them is because if you end up having these genes, you probably know because you probably have a pretty extensive family history of breast cancer. A lot of times when families have a big history of breast cancer, it's because they're passing on that gene. But sometimes it doesn't mean that at all. It can just mean that like, for whatever reason, your family ends up getting breast cancer. And there's so much about genetics that isn't known, but the BRCA gene in particular is one where a lot of times if you find out that you have it, sometimes people will get a preventative mastectomy or they will just, um, start to get screened earlier in their life or more frequently or something like that where they know that they are at a higher risk for breast cancer and their doctors know so they stay more on top of that. That is the most popular type of gene and probably the most well researched just because it is very proven to show that you, if you have that gene then you can have a higher risk of breast cancer. But there's tons of other genetic mutations out there that can increase your risk for breast cancer and other types of cancer. The genetic mutation that we found out that I had is uh, on the CHECK2 gene. And it's way more rare and way less studied. And there's different subsets of the mutation and there's a more common one on the CHECK2 gene and that's not even the one that I have, I have a different one. And that can just be passed down. And your risk of getting breast cancer associated with CHECK2 isn't as high as your risk um, with BRCA. But like I said, there's just not that much research out about it. It's really interesting stuff, but we're learning more and more every day about genetics and genetic mutations. Even though we know a lot, we really don't know a lot. <laughs> okay, so now let me talk a little bit about chemotherapy. I have some other videos about chemotherapy and my experience with it if you're interested in that, but a very common type of chemotherapy that breast cancer patients get is called AC chemotherapy. AC stands for adriamycin and cytoxin. A Adriamycin is the red chemo that is pretty aggressive and makes you feel really sick. It's also called the red devil because of all of this. I got four rounds of AC chemo every other week and then I had supposed to get 12 rounds of Taxol chemotherapy. I ended up only getting nine rounds because it caused neuropathy in my fingers so I had to stop early. Taxol is just another type of chemotherapy and there's different doses of Taxol so some people can get Taxol every week so they can get 12 treatments every week and some people get fewer treatments total but they get it every other week or every three weeks. It just depends on you and your diagnosis and your doctor and all that. Another common type of chemo that breast cancer patient get is called TC chemo, which is taxotere and cytoxin, that same cytoxin that is in the AC chemo that I got. One thing that I think people don't know is that chemo is not just a drug. Like you, if you say, I'm going to go get chemotherapy, not every single person is talking about the same thing. There's tons of different types of chemotherapy, and so someone who's getting treated for breast cancer would have a completely different type of chemo than someone that's getting treated for another type of cancer. And even patients who are treated for breast cancer get different types of chemo from one another depending on their diagnosis. All of these types of chemo that I've mentioned are usually given through an IV. Um, that IV can be in your arm, um, just like how you would normally get an IV. Some people get a pick line in their arm, which is basically just like they stick something in there that they can access at any point. I ended up getting a port and that was a device that was inserted into the bigger veins up in my chest um, and it just makes it easier to stick that and uh, give the chemo through that so that it's not hurting your smaller more vulnerable veins in your arm because a lot of times if you keep getting chemo in your arm and it's a really aggressive type of chemo um, it can just ruin your veins. <laughs> my veins are kind of ruined um, just from all of the other testing and things that I've had done to them, but if I had gotten chemo that way, I'm sure that they would be even worse. There are other types of chemo that aren't given through an IV. There's oral chemo, which can be given in like the form of pills, 
and typically oral chemo is less aggressive than um, chemo that goes through an IV but they all kind of had the same side effects some are just more mild than others and like I said different types of chemo different types of side effects you may have heard me talk about targeted therapy um, some people call that oral chemo, but it's not really exactly the same thing. Um, targeted therapy is more of a treatment that targets the changes in the cancer cells that could be things that help them grow into cancer. So targeted therapy is more looking at targeting cancer cells specifically, whereas chemotherapy um, tends to just attack cells that are growing and dividing rapidly. That's why your hair falls out when you get chemo because your hair is growing really quickly and so the chemo attacks that makes your hair fall out. In my case my targeted therapy had a lot of the same side effects as chemotherapy just a little bit more mild and it was something that I originally was set to be on for five years whereas chemo you don't normally do for five whole years you usually are on chemo for a few months. If you're more interested in the differences between chemo and targeted therapy and the side effects that I experienced check out my other videos. Hormone therapy is another type of treatment you can get. I briefly talked about this earlier but I had hormone therapy because my breast cancer was hormone receptor positive, ER and PR positive. There's lots of different types of hormone therapy and they sometimes work well with certain types of targeted therapies and so different people can be on different types of hormone therapy and different types of targeted therapy and it just depends again on your individual diagnosis and what your doctor recommends. Hormone therapy like I mentioned before tries to block certain hormones. We tried to shut down my ovaries, I didn't have periods while I was on hormone therapy because you're just trying to make my body just like kind of go into a medical menopause state and not produce estrogen as much because the cancer used estrogen to grow. My foot fell asleep. Next thing I want to talk about is surgery terms. So you may have heard people say that they get a mastectomy. That's basically where you will remove all of the breast tissue from the breast and a lot of times people will get reconstruction along with that to put in a breast implant to keep their breast kind of the same size as it was or maybe bigger or smaller depending on what your preference is. But that's just a way to get the cancer that's in your breast out of your breast and to prevent cancer from forming again in your breast because you took out all the breast tissue. A single mastectomy is in one breast, a double mastectomy would be both breasts, and a partial mastectomy is also called a lumpectomy. It's sometimes confusing because sometimes people think a partial mastectomy means a single mastectomy. Hello. <clears throat> Say hi. <laughs> anyway, a lumpectomy or a partial mastectomy is just when they take out a portion of the breast tissue. Oh my gosh, you're going to make my camera fall over. And after they take out that lump of breast tissue, they will check to make sure you have negative margins. And that just means they check um, the area at the edge of what they took out and they see if there's any cancer in that area. Um, because if there is cancer in that area, that means that there's probably some more cancer in your breast that they haven't completely gotten out yet. So they might go in and do another lumpectomy or go back in and do a mastectomy just to get everything out. I ended up needing two lumpectomies. Um, the first time I did not have negative margins, I still had some DCIS left in the margins, and then by the second time um, everything was clear and good and I had negative margins. Radiation is another type of treatment that is used for breast cancer, and that is not the same as chemotherapy. To get radiation, you have to basically have your body and everything mapped out for you. So you sit down and you lay down and you get scanned and they will figure out where the cancer is, figure out where the cancer was if you had it removed, and they will try to shoot little razor radiation at those areas. Some people get confused because a lot of the times um, people will get radiation after they've had surgery to remove their cancer and that's just because um, Surgery can't completely get rid of everything. There's always going to be tiny little particles that are still left in your body. So radiation and sometimes chemo, sometimes people get chemo after surgery too, are ways of just making sure that you get like those little last bits of cancer that are still in your body and get rid of them. Okay, so I have more things on this list here, but my video is getting too long. So the last thing I want to talk about is 
uh, describing cancer on scans. So you may hear the term NED. That stands for no evidence of disease. I am currently no evidence of disease. That means that I have had a PET scan, I've had MRIs, I've had ultrasounds. On all of those scans, they don't really see anything on it that is concerning. They don't see any active cancer on the PET scan and they aren't seeing any spots on my in my breast or anything that look like uh, cancer could be forming. So I'm currently no evidence of disease and you could also say that I am in remission. You can be in complete or partial remission. So complete remission would be you do not have any cancer in your body. Partial remission would be you have cancer in your body but it's not active at the moment and it's not growing. Cancer free is another term that people use in a lot of different ways. Some people say that they're cancer free as soon as they do the surgery that removes their cancer. But a lot of people say that you're not really cancer free until you have been no evidence of disease for five whole years because um, in those five years is the most likely time when your cancer could return. I've currently been NED for three years, so I say I'm NED, I say that I'm in remission, but I have not said that I'm cancer free yet because it has not been five years since my diagnosis. And that's basically all I have. If you have any other questions about cancer terms, leave them in the comments below. I might be able to answer them, but I am not a doctor and none of this video is medical advice. If you need more information on any of this kind of stuff, I really recommend talking to your doctor, especially if you have cancer. But. I'm uh, free to talk in the comments and on Instagram, if you message me there, I will most likely respond unless I for some reason don't see it, but I usually do. And yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you want. Yeah, that's all. Bye.